It's Thursday again, tell everybody to lock in Grab some popcorn, a drink, and go and throw your AirPods in It's a one-hour show, constantly speaking facts Bulletproof stats are always shooting from Matt And when it comes to Kyle, you getting numbers and style Jake is gonna educate you, he has that knowledge on fire Player, step your game up, don't be sluggish or lazy Or Jimmy J might hit you with a shaky baby Catch him on YouTube or any podcast platform Breaking all the news down like Shaq does the backboards No hot takes, this is where the hottest debate's at Now kick your feet up, cause it's time for straight facts What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Straight Facts, a sports show that educates and entertains. Brought to you by the Up On Game Presents Network. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing to Up On Game wherever you get your podcasts, man. Apple, Spotify, um, we're on YouTube as well. So get with Up On Game. Make sure you're getting all the facts and all the content that's on there. They have a lot of good content coming out. But once again, it's your boy, Jimmy J, my guys, Jake Galley and Stat Matt Robinson in studio here at Brownstone Media Media in Pottstown, PA. I love that we're in studio. We're all in high spirits, man, because the Phillies have been on a tear since the last time we've been in studio. They've won two series. They're up, I think, right now on the Padres, Matt. Are they still 4-2. Winning? Up 4-2 right now. They're hanging on against the Padres, looking to go up 2-0 in the series. When, when the episode is over and its conclusion, the game should be about to be over. So, like, we'll give you all an update. But how y'all been, man? It's been good to be in studio. Good to see you guys. It's amazing to be in studio. I mean, it's it's great to be back. We we are in sports heaven, I call it, in October. Yeah, great like, time of year. You have great like the best of parts of the MLB season. You've got all of college, all of pros. It's just awesome. It's also, I know when this isn't our like spectrum of interest, but the union killing it in the yeah. MLS. No, no, I mean, they're, our they're, Philly sports. Philly sports is in a really good spot. No, I'm not gonna um, lie. What were we doing off camera? The Brian Windhorse, like. Something, something strange something is strange going on. Something strange is going on in Philly, man. You guys are the Fives are three and zero. Did I hear? Very strange. Yeah. <laughs> like what? What is going on <laughs> in Philly? Speaking of strange, I think we all can agree that there's some strange things, at least to us, going on in the NFL. And we, I say it like that because we're gonna have to check tape on ourselves and and just go back and see some of the bold predictions, some of the things we've said about coming in to the NFL season and. Like, y'all, sometimes you just got to be in a dog. You got to grow up and wear your L's. And that's what we're going to do today is we got some L's to wear. Like, it's okay. It's what, it happens. Peel back the curry. Like, the, you know what I mean? So the best players do. You know, if I only focus on the shots that I'm making, I'm not going to get better. I'm not going to so. get better. What, what, did, what did the a great the great Lil Uzi Vert said? Statistically, I can't win every time, but the score probably like 10 to 3. Yeah, and I feel, okay. like that's, I feel like that's how we are. Yeah, like, can't win every time. Right? So here we go. We're going to put our – we have so little L's as a podcast, we're going to put them all on the table for you. Right here, out in here, so we can talk about them. And I guess I'll go first, get mine out the way. Do you guys? I'm loud about my takes, so all the listeners, all my friends, all the followers can probably pretty much tell what mine was. And that was not only that the Raiders. I said a lot about the Raiders, some of which I could take back. <laughs> I said a lot about the Raiders. I said that they were going to represent the AFC coming out of um, going to the Super Bowl, coming out of the AFC. I said they were going to finish ahead of the Chargers. I said that Derek Carr was going to have like a top, I think, 11 to 12, 13 quarterback season. Mm. I said Devontae Adams was going to be the best receiver in the NFL. Oh, man. Was I talking about, like, Jonathan Abram in the, in the offseason? Like, I was really going off about the Raiders. Um, but the main thing is that I said they were going to finish ahead of the Chargers, which it doesn't look like they're going to finish ahead of anybody right now. Um, sixth in, in total points right now, up from 18th last year, but 28th in points allowed, 24th in turnover differential. So getting scored on, not winning the turnover margin, not really performing as a team. And we talked about it. The only one really eating in this offense is Devontae Adams. And you would think that that would mean all systems are firing and it's not like they're still just absolutely losing football games. So like, I guess I say it once again, I can't believe the Raiders are making me look this bad. Well, like I really if you remember that their head coach is Josh, Josh McDaniels. And I thought that was going to be a good thing. Josh McDaniels suckers people into thinking he's smart because he does a good job when Belichick has, like, the reins around his neck. But once he gets unleashed, he, like, really fell apart with the Broncos, and now he's falling apart with the Raiders. And all the reports are, like, people just don't like the guy. He's just, like, a guy that people don't like. He's... But do people like Belichick? No, but... There, there are people that do like him because, like, it's like this weird, and it's a, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, it's but, 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 but McDaniel's is like this smarmy, punky, like 
you want to slap him kind of energy. And when you lose and he's acting like he's the most arrogant, it's a Lane Kiffin energy. It's they're like brothers that they've never met. And, <laughs> and, and I just want to say like last year, they overperformed their point differential this year. They're underperforming. It all balances out. You can't continue to win close games. It's just unfeasible because close games come down to little things that you don't have control over like a little weird deflection or whether a fumble bounced your way or bounced out of bounds. And they're not as bad as one and four, but they're, they're exactly. I'm, I'm going to take my L later. So I'll take my W now. Um, they're like, well, they've, they're like a seven and 10, eight and nine t- kind of team. Um, They'll be lucky to get to seven to 10, eight, nine now. Well, like, they're like, going to co- they're gonna like, cover no. a lot of games if they get viewed as like a horrible team. I'll put it that way. Yeah, it's a really peculiar situation because the statistics on offense are good, as we said. Uh, Eighth, I believe it was. in Sixth in points. Sixth in points scored. And then when you you start to dive a little deeper, you're right, Devontae is eating. 414 yards through five games. He's got five touchdowns through five games. I believe he's like third in the league in receiving yards right now. Yeah, he he is performing very well, um, as you would expect. He leads the team with 54 targets. This is where the issues start to arise. Because the next leading receiver in targets on the team is not Darren Waller. It is not Hunter Renfro. It's not even Josh Jacobs. Uh Uh-oh. It is Uh backpack guy Mac Hollins. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Mac Hollins is back. He has 29 targets, 273 yards. Uh, A lot of those coming, I think, in a singular game where he really popped off. And let's let's go back to... The first, what was it, week three that the Raiders get off to this awful start, and it looks like my prediction is not going to come true. We start to see the writing on the wall, and you pointed it out then, and you said if Mac Collins is the leading receiver or is one of your leading receivers, something is going wrong, and that's a big indication to me that they haven't fixed whatever is going wrong clearly because Mac Collins is still up there. You're not finding your biggest targets, and what goes hand in hand in that is the Darren Waller drop off. Like last year, only plays in eleven games, but in a seventeen-game projection, would have had eighty-five receptions, eighty-five receptions over a thousand yards. Still, only the three TDs, but still would have had a good season. And then this year, on pace for only fifty-four catches, only five hundred ninety-five yards, under six hundred yards, and still only three touchdowns. So, like, like if 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 someone's gonna drop off, Darren Waller's gonna drop off. I guess someone's gonna have to fill in that that gap and, and fix it. And like the fact that it's Mac Hollins is a, is a double whammy bad on the Raiders, like that's, and Derek Carr. And, and ba- Derek Carr's true. having a bad year. Yeah, yeah, very true. Worst completion percentage since his rookie year. One of the worst yards per attempt of his career. Worst passer rating since his rookie year. And he has weapons. Yeah. Like it's not like he doesn't have like weapons or time. Like he and he's just not like he's just not executing. Yeah, I mean it's it's if you look at like he never looks settled. And you would think when you surround Derek Carr with all these weapons would come a poisonous and a, and a steadiness that would allow him to go out and just, you know, if I just execute, like you say, Matt, if I just make the right reads, go about the game plan in the way that I should, that all these weapons and this offense comes together and we hit on all cylinders. But there's, there's no, like, he doesn't look comfortable. Like, he doesn't look like he's sure uh, of himself and those weapons and they went out to get and it's resulting in the Raiders not being able to keep pace with all these teams that in my view, they should be able to keep pace with. Yeah. It, I think it comes down, you know, Matt mentioned Josh McDaniels and Derek Carr's learning a new offense from a person who he may not agree with. Like if Josh McDaniels says, Hey, hey this is our game plan. And Derek Carr's doesn't agree with that. Like he's your new coach. That's kind of, uh, you're kind of hemmed into that. And it goes back to all bad coaching. Um, a lot of players deal with that in the NFL, so it's not necessarily an excuse. But I think you couple it with the fact that they're in a really tough division. Uh, they played a couple divisional games they, so far. But are they? Because, yes, on paper and in theory, they're in a tough division. The Broncos stink too. <laughs> the Chargers are underperforming as well. And that's also kind of what makes me – Double mad about this prediction. I wouldn't call four and two underperforming. They're underperforming. They they, they scraped to that four and two win. One of them was against the. Yeah, Broncos. but that's exactly what the Chargers never do. That's <laughs> true. They usually give those games. They win the shootout yeah. games and they lose the scraping. But still, 
one of those games is against the Broncos. When they got embarrassed by the Jaguars. You know what I mean? So like that they are they are underperforming. That that four and two record is a little bit fugazi. So are they in a, in this crazy juggernaut of a division? Like if they are playing to what I believe they should, they're right at the top of the division. They're right there with everybody. Yeah, I I don't know that. Like no one's run away with the AFC West yet. Unless they're not head and shoulders. Above unless their the, the, the Chiefs are still like. The, I know the Chiefs like they had a tough loss to the Bills and they had a bad and loss the to the Colts. But like they're the Chiefs are the Chiefs. They're number one until someone in that division. They're number one until someone. At the end of the season clinches. I guess, and opinion. you say that by default because they're the Chiefs. But if you start this season in a race from the start of this season, no one's run away with it. Like, you give them the crown because they're the Chiefs and they've been at the top for the last, you know, X number of years in that division. But no one this year has has taken it from, from start to finish and been like, this. I am the clear favorite. I'm going to run away with this division. Like, I said, give it to the Chiefs by default. But the AFC West isn't performing as a whole as we thought it would. I, that leaves the door open to me for the Raiders. Yeah. And that disappoints me. Let, me. let me tell you what. I'm looking at the schedule. They will be fortunate to win three more games. They will be fortunate. After their bye week this uh, – or excuse me, it was this past week. They have the Texans. Good. Great. That should be a winnable game. Uh, the Saints, that's maybe two. Uh, and then you have the Steelers are probably the only other – I don't know, man. The Steelers are a really tough team. It's really right, when you play the Jaguars, really the Colts aren't that good. Oh, right, the Colts. Okay, so we'll go there. Those three: Texans, Saints, Colts. If they don't come out of these next four games, they already beat Denver with at least two wins. They're going to win under five games, five or less, guaranteed. That's just really tough. Guaranteed. That's. I'm here. This here. We could be. We could be checking tape of the check tape segment. If they don't come out of this with a positive record, they're so in who, really good who are the teams they for sure need to beat? To get to stay above the Texans and the Saints are probably remember they're minus three right now for a record, so they have to make up three. Right, so they are. So these are five Texans and Saints. They could jet all the way up to three and four, and then we'll be in the next two weeks. And we'll they could be Jackson. Like they could go if five. They, if they go up to three and four in the next two weeks, you got to look at where the Raiders are. Yeah, they're at Jacksonville though. They're at New Orleans. Uh, so I think Jacksonville. I, I, I honestly like Jacksonville at that point might be favored in that game by Vegas. So. I don't know if they should necessarily win it. It's a winnable game. There's a lot. And all the division games are winnable because all division games are usually winnable unless you're really, really bad. I, I don't mean, think they're, they're bad. I don't think they're, <laughs> they're bad. No, I, I don't think they're that bad. I think that they are the same as the, you know, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. They're, they're the same as another team that we're going if to If I'm being about. the most optimistic I can about the Raiders. Which is what? They, <laughs> Which is no, no, no. If I'm trying to put my mind in, like, Get everything benefited out. Oh, they have a shot to win. I'll give them the win. Okay. They have a decent shot. I get them to nine and eight. But that's really, very, optimistic. really just stretching. Oh, I think, yeah, yeah. A rubber is, band beyond its that is point glass, of no return. That is glass seventy five percent full. That is not glass half full. <laughs> yeah. That is glass mostly full. All right, so that's my L. I wore it. Dunce yep. cap on. Yep. Here, Jake. Uh oh. Take the L. Put the dunce cap yeah. on. Get a dunce cap. So, Pass that dunce to the left. Here, go to L. I do want to just say, I've been right about a lot this year. But this is about the misses. You have. You have. You have. And, and, and fair. Fair. Because actually, peel back the curtain, Jake wanted to put on W's in the script too. And I was like, I don't know if we have time <laughs> to put on W's. And the reason why I wanted to, because this man got a couple. Yeah. I I, well, it's funny because I was like, oh, what was my like long shot Super Bowl contender? That could be like one of the L's I talk about. And I go back. I thought it was the Colts. I don't. I don't know how we let him say the Eagles. It was the Eagles, and honestly, I did think I say I said in the moment very homery, and maybe they're they're probably beyond a long long shot. shot. We talk about the Eagles, the Dolphins, and Tua. Yeah. um, Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis. Like you got you got some W's. You got some W's. All right, but your L. Yes, the L. And honestly, the NFC offseason episode where I went back to pull this from was full of them. I was very. I listened myself very high on Russell Wilson. Mm. I was very high on Julio to hear that it just happened going to your Bucks. But the one that I think I extrapolated the most on and was probably going to be probably going to be the most wrong here is that Allen Robinson would surpass the combination of, of Robert Woods and OBJ. The number two. Number two, receiver. right. The quote unquote number two on the Rams last year when you combine those two players was 72 catches, 860 yards, nine touchdowns. 
And I think we the question was, can he surpass it? I was like, oh, absolutely. He's going to have over 1,000 yards. I, I was going way over. He is currently on pace for 48 catches, 482 yards, and six touchdowns. And to be honest, the six touchdowns is generous. Right. To you be, go, phew. Like, oh, hey, hey, like six, six touchdowns is like, I might be able to live with that year. And so that's based off of his 17-game pace. Uh, I have been stunned by, and I think a lot of people have, by how bad and anemic that uh, Rams offense has been at times this year. They have not been able to protect the quarterback. They're looking to like trade Cam Akers. They're not happy with their running backs. Yeah, right. So it, it's a big t- – it's not just Allen Rodgers. It's obviously not his fault, in my opinion. I think he's still doing all the things that he had been doing. But the offense is in shambles there, mm-hmm. and it's costing him big time. And here, here's here's the difference. He also doesn't have the same speed he used to have. He lost a little bit coming yeah. off an injury. But I think the, the biggest thing I see is just in like concept and in football in general. And when – you have a, a quarterback who's struggling to get it going to multiple weapons, and he's in an offense that throws the ball a lot. He's going to default to his number one receiver, especially if it's a person he's established so much chemistry with. If I just need to get a completion, it's going to Cooper Cup. And you see the Rams in so much need in, in their offense, like fourth and something, third and long, red zones, you've been there, you haven't um, converted. Like, I need to get this. If you need to get it, I'm going to Cooper Cup. Maybe over anyone in the NFL, but certainly in the Rams' offense. Now, reverberate back to Chicago when you have Mitch Trubisky and Justin Fields and Andy Dalton, and I need a first down. Who am I going to in the Bears' offense? Yeah, A-Rob. I'm going to A-Rob over Darnell Mooney, <laughs> over, like, you know what I mean? Over these second secondary guys, these secondary options. I'm going to Allen Robinson. He's now in the, you don't get looked at when I need it. Jake, you said it off camera. You go back and roll the tape. There's times where A-Rod, A-Rob is open. I don't know if he doesn't know, you know, doesn't know how to call for the ball or, or that's just Stafford's read on that play. But I would imagine that a good amount of these plays that you rolled tape on are in need situations. Like, I need to get it. So as soon as Cooper Cup turns his head, the ball is going to be at him. And I, I'm taking my chances with him coming down to it in double coverage than I am throwing it to A-Rob in a spot that, like, I'm not sure he's going to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think it's just default. Like, the Rams haven't been in the driver's seat a lot this year. You're in the driver's seat. I'm pretty sure he got his his touchdown in the game that they they handedly won. Like, they're in the driver's seat. So, A-Rob, now I'm, now I'm going to my second and third and fourth or whatever reads. We're in the driver's seat, I can do that. But I think that's what it comes down to. So, like, yes, that's an L on your part. Yes, they're not performing or he's not performing. But I don't know. To me, that's where that's it was a dependency in general, and him not performing is a dependent one. Like, it, if I had to be honest, it's it, I, the Brands are such a weird team this year because I don't know. It's hard to no one can call like the no one really mentions it like a big crisis because they got their Super Bowl last year. So like their success worked, and it's almost like they're just kind of like on autopilot yeah. and not realizing that like you have to try to like be a really good team. Like I know you're three and three, but like you're like, you're like you ahead playing you, right. weirdly like bad against the Panthers. Like, and it's just like, like you're better than this. Like, and you, you, you remember them being better. And I, it's, if they're just like content with winning the one, they just might just like post like some mediocre record. And then like, Oh no, we're we're not like it won't be till like November, December where there was oh we actually have to try it might be too late. Yeah, and looking a little deeper into these stats, you know, the red zone has actually been so if you so they've ran fifty three plays in the red zone. Let's call it you get three attempts in the red zone, that breaks down to se- about seventeen drives. And they've scored five touchdowns, zero interceptions. I would gather, and I don't know this for sure, if I look through the plays I could tell you. I would say probably all of Allen Robinson's touchdowns so far have came in the red zone, which is where he's been, you know, I mean, that, that's kind of as a big body receiver where right, so you're right, supposed you're right. to eat. And um, I mean, even still though, like, you know, five touchdowns, zero interceptions, but out of 17 drives, that gives you a 33, less than a 33% success rate in the red zone. That's uh, scary. So some of that has to do with the run game. Some of it has to do with uncomfortableness, but like, you guys are right. I think it's like there's no real fans there, so they, there's no like crazy like 
Yeah, you have true. to do better. Like, that's oh, you true. just won us a Super Bowl. We don't really care about you anyway. Like, oh, great. Why is that fair LA fan? Well, okay. Yeah, you you bring that junk to the Northeast. Oh, my God. Could you different. imagine? It's different. It's Mad different. Stafford's yards per completion this year is 9.9. Last year was 12.1. Like, that's such a huge that's drop off. off. Um, And it's, it's funny because you look at, like, you look at the record and the way they're losing these games. One, I'm wondering if their defense is putting them in any – crazy bad situations and they're not only one game. Their defense has led up over 30 points. It's the first game of the season against the bills. They've kept good teams in check until then. If you're the Rams and I'm giving you 24 and 20 and what 15 that they're holding these teams to, you got to win those games. Yeah. Like if you're the Rams offense and my de- like, that's not lose that game to Dallas. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's a, that's a goal as a defense is the under 20. If I give you that, yeah. you got to win these games and, like it's not an offense that doesn't that hasn't had the opportunity. Like they found themselves down and trailing in a lot of these games, throwing the ball a lot. Like you would you would think that just opens more opportunities for Allen Robinson, but it's you know it's not tenth in path, passing offense this year, uh, second to last in turnovers. They're just not they're not hitting on any cylinders this year. So I mean, do we think it turns around for a Rob? Not for a Rob, but I do think it turns around for the Rams. That's why I didn't put them as my L. Because they? they're my Super Bowl pick, if you remember. <laughs> and the Ravens. Uh, the Ravens are matter. just weird. Yeah. You had, but but you had Rams. DVOA Ravens. likes the Ravens. I I like my eye test likes the Ravens too. I think my eye test likes Lamar Jackson. This is okay. We are. This is <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> the Ravens. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, talk yeah. about it in future episodes for sure. Uh, I will just say. So I think Note Boom I saw went out, which was their replacement for Andrew Whitworth, um, who was their left tackle for a couple years. They were already shaky before that. Mm-hmm. If he's out for an extended amount of time, they're going to continue to struggle to run their passing offense because they're not going to be able to allow the receivers time to get open. I mean, that's, that's basic football. Um, for that reason, I'm going to say they don't turn it around. I think there has to be a team in that division that really takes a nosedive um, by nature of it. I don't know if they're going to go full nosedive. They're, they're going to win some games, but no, no, Super, no Super Bowl this year, which I guess isn't that crazy to say. Yeah, but you're the, you're the only team that – the Eagles are the only team that have a firm grip on the NFC. Like, there's still something open about the NFC. I Not hate for to the say Rams. It. I hate to say it, but Dallas is right in the mix. That's yeah, it. I hate which that you put, said it too. I, yeah. Which means <laughs> – which to me kind of furthers my point of like, that that the door is still open. All right, time to go to Stat Matt's L, which we've talked about a couple of times, but to – to go to the it's gonna be a freeing. It's going to be a freeing. It's the finality of it. Finality, finality it. correct. Finality. It, it better be. Because <laughs> we, we went back we're all the way back now, September 14th on Factor Fake. <laughs> we talked about Saquon Barkley and if his, <laughs> if his return <clears throat> to stardom was imminent. Stat Matt said no. He's a bottom tier running back. And if you go back, even in the clip, Jake and I are like, like that, are you sure? That's what he said. Bottom tier running back. He said yes. Let's fast forward. Six, seven weeks. He leads the NFL in yards from scrimmage. He has more rush yards this year, 616, through six games than he did in 13 games last year, which is 593. And oh, yeah, the Giants are 5 and 1. So, Stat Matt, I understand you're a big Eagles fan. I understand it's hard to root for the Giants and everything. But I, I, can we, you know what I mean? Can we wear it? So, I don't understand at all how the Giants are good. Don't need to. The only thing I understand about the Giants is I was wrong about Saquon. Like, I can see being wrong. Like, he was an incredible talent. He was great when he first came out. He's having a better year so far this year than he's ever had in his career. His yards per carry is all he's ever been. So, I think it just shows that Brian Dable is just a really good coach. I'm okay, and with, I'm okay with giving I'm really Brian upset Dable about up. that. But, no, I'm, I'm no. okay with you giving the praise to Brian Dable. I really am. No, because it I'm shows, okay like, they that. misuse Saquon for all this time. And right. Saquon had injuries. And the combination of the two made Saquon – Made someone like me think that they went on the bottom two running. <laughs> they, they, That's how bad the Giants there. screwed up. Yeah. And like I forgot the innate talent. I thought it was kind of gone because of injuries. And I was like, no, nope, the Giants have screwed it up, mm-hmm. which I forgot to factor in, which is a crucial mistake with the Low 2010 mistake Giants. Mistake on your part, yeah. Low mistake um, on your part. So Saquon's a top running back again. The Giants are really good. I still don't think they're five and one good, but they'll like they might sneak into a wild card or something. I mean, it's just the, the wins that they've had. This is a more of a Giants point than a Saquon point. Titans on the road, um, Packers in neutral territory, 
go to the or I mean, you beat the Ravens at home, but still, you you beat the Ravens. Come back, like a comeback win against the Ravens. At least they, they're not, you are what you at this point. You are what you are. Your record kind of. I mean, I know a couple. But their they players are really good. Other than Saquon, their players aren't good. So it has yeah, to be the coaching. Like, it has to be the coaching, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. And that's fine. But that's coaching can make you a good team, man. I guess okay. I'm not. I'm not really worried about why the Giants are good. You just gotta like admit that they're a good football team, or you're gonna get beat by them. Like admit that right. you have to play them twice. Admit that they're a good. No, team. Oh, they'll, they'll beat the Eagles. Well, I mean, this or is, you're going, this or is you're going the, to lose them. The divisional, the way the divisions work, the teams are so familiar with each other. Here's all I'm gonna say. It's hilarious that we bring up Ryan Dable because he. Yeah, I, I agree with you for what it's worth. Like. Not a ton of shine in the beginning of the year. Really coming into the Giants, not a ton of shine. They finally start winning. He's getting some talk on him. If he was 10 years younger and had a oh chiseled, God. shaved beard, <laughs> oh my God. and he had some spiky hair. And he fixed cool Josh makeup, Allen. Like, that's an incredible He would be achievement. viewed as, like, the best coach and, and ever. And, hey, and he fixed Daniel Jones, but, you know. Get he, use out of him. He, he super glued the arm back together and, and just put it in one point so he doesn't fall and break himself anymore. Now, like, it, he stood him up. And, and here's – also, let's remember the context of Brian Dayball going to the Giants. This big scandal with Bill Belichick not knowing how to use his phone, and he texts Brian Flores, texts to Ryan Bryan. He did not do that on accident, so, let me tell you. So here's the thing. <laughs> so maybe that's why <laughs> maybe that's why Brian Dable had to kind of tiptoe into New York because that's the biggest media market in the world. That's a good point. And you already have controversy. So it's like, hey, man, let's not brag and boast. You can't go and, and celebrate him, yeah. And then – like, you definitely can't do that and then not get off to a good start. So it may, like, benefit you to just, like, hey, let me just shut up and go in the office and work. And then if we win, I can stick my chest out. He was number one under the radar. But but yeah. but imagine all that happens. He goes in. He's all loud and boisterous about it. It looks bad. That looks bad because of what happened. And then imagine they don't get off to a good start. Like, he'd be, he'd be on the hottest of seats right nah, now. Nah, everyone expected the Giants to stink. So it's, that's my nah. caveat. Not as much as you did. <laughs> like the Giants have like one of the worst records. Like stay. the them and the Jets are like the two worst teams in football over the past like four years. No, before, I, I, I agree. Um, I agree. Like this year, but but uh, and now the Jets are. But good put too. that all in context. I mean, they we expected the Giants to stink last year. It didn't make men make them any more let any less of a talking point for them stinking. Yeah, I, and in the year before that, the shoe's still going to. My take with the Giants, good for them. They're much punchier than they have been. I mean, obviously they're one of. The, you not can't the tell Eagles, me five and what like. Right. Okay. They're great. No, they're, they're doing a great now, job. Now, if you, you can tell job. me this, hey, you can tell me job. this. They could give you Cardinals energy, like a 5 and 1, 6 and 1, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 1 Cardinals team last year where you're like, ah, uh, like at some point the buck stops. I don't know when it stops, but at some point it stops. You can, I'd be more on point with that than you just telling me they're a bad football team. No, I don't think, the, oh, no, no, no. I don't think they're a bad football team. I just don't think they are good enough to win the division, win a playoff game uh, away. I don't. I don't. Not when you're playing Maybe teams not when everything division. matters. And, and DVOA know. has them, them at uh, where are they? 18th in the league. So DVOA doesn't believe in them. How do you view the Packers? Nah, you the, heard the way I talk. Packers are 20th in DVOA. So. How, you, how do you view the Packers? I don't know. It depends on what Rodgers is feeling like playing. Like Ro- Everything is up to like Rodgers' mood, kind of. <laughs> how do you view the Ravens? I think they're good. How do you view the, I mean, the Titans? But how do you view the Titans? Eh. They, they're they all the same to me. They are very similar teams. The Ravens. Beat them all. The Ravens are one Beat that I all. say stick out as a better team. But Beat them all. You're right. And, and, you're right. and to me, as much as I would love for this just to be a Saquon Barkley talking point segment, I don't think you can just talk about him. You have to talk about the Giants as a whole. Yeah. If they were bad and he was just back to his normal self, whatever. It'd be Scrap same the old. The same team. old. Scrap yeah. the rest of the team. But – like talking about him within the context of how good the Giants have been and how good Brian Dable has been at coaching, to me is a more fun way of talking about the Giants. Like they're they're them, them and the Jets. Like New York football is the most interesting thing in the NFL right now. That's uh, a take. Good and bad. Good. Hey man, Jets got a ton of intrigue. First and foremost is how are they doing that with the worst quarterback I starting said, in the I NFL today? I said most today. interesting. Like I didn't say best. Yeah, I just we NFL. talked about well, it's interesting. Yeah, we talked about one AFC West team. My other L is Broncos my dark horse Super Bowl. Hmm. Russell Wilson has been a disaster. Not a real person. Um Wolverine blood in his veins, according to him. Sure. Um Might be. Sure. he has the worst stats in every category. 
of his career. Any year, you try to pick and choose, oh, touchdown percentage, passer rating, completion percentage, yards per attempt, every single one, it's the worst this year. Um, it's an unprecedented collapse of a great player, if that is what it is. Um, uh, is there hope? They're second in the DVOA for defense, so if they can get their offense together, they're, they might be decent. All their losses are by less than um, double digits. All their, their single-digit losses. And my last caveat is Wilson had a seven-game la- stretch last year where he stunk just as bad as he's stinking now, and he still ended with a one and three pass rating, which tied for fourth. So I mean, there's. I wouldn't. Players. I wouldn't. I'm not feeling good about it, but it's not like a lost cause. Oh no! Oh oh! I didn't. That's weird. It's a lost cause to me. Yeah, they, they, I. They, they're but, not. And great. here's here's the thing. And, and if you remember, if you go back to that episode and listen, I was, like, really on the fence. Like, I was, like, I can see it working. I was in on but it. But, like, I know. I could, But I had to see it first. Like, I was, like, I got I to, gotta like, yeah. see it work. Because, like, the, the enamoring in Seattle was let Russ cook. So, no one perceived that he had as much of the reins of the offense as everyone thought he should. And maybe Pete Carroll was just some weird genius that knew above everyone that, like, we, he can't have the whole range. Now, Wilson offense. was that good in mm-hmm. Seattle. He really was that good. I mean, like, yes. I'm inclined but, to. But he's never had full. Now someone fully gave him the reins. He's a system player. Fully gave it to him. He's, and a, like, and, he's a system player. And, hey, maybe that's what it is, bro. That, that's kind of what I'm. Jimmy G. Like, get that's you. What I'm, wow. Yeah, no, that's what he's playing no. like right now, oh, by wow. the way. Or he actually, this, no, no, let me correct myself. Wow. He's playing worse than Jimmy G. Like, way worse than Jimmy G right now. Wow. So. We could get our Jimmy G takes off in another episode. He's another favorite here. But yeah, that's another. Oh, not, I it's a, it's that's a little crazy, but like uh, they ran the ball so much because Russell Wilson would come undone if you let him throw yeah, 50 man, times well, a game. Like, not in Seattle. You're, I, I hard disagree. I'm not going to get into like a relitigation. Russell Wilson, Seattle is first battle Hall of Fame level talent. Starting not like the years they made the Super Bowl. It's like kind of funny. Right after that is when he peaked from. 2015 to 2020 specifically, 2021 was a little bit down, but not that down. He was unbelievable at everything, mm-hmm. and he's just collapsed as a player. I There's no way anyone can convince me that it's because of Pete Carroll's offense that he was that well, good. No, it's not the offense. It's basic football principles in the sense that, like, you know, you have a heavy run game that you force the defense to secondary to respect – it's going to make reads off play action that much easier. They ran a ton of and, play and action. You can be magnificent. I mean, I you could be magnificent inside that scheme for sure. That's no, but the scheme changed all the time. They didn't have a consistent offensive coordinator there. They let, but let the, were, no, but the principal, the offensive principal in Seattle, they may no, have changed so, coordinators. The but system the quarterbacks the same. don't make so, aren't the ones that are the best in the league at deep throws, and that's what Wilson was. That's fair. That's probably a. Yeah, he's not a system quarterback. I'll say that. Well, well I get what you're saying. He's a concept he's quarterback. He's not. Concept he's, quarterback. He was like, aided by You know what I fact. mean? Like, not like not a plug-and-play quarterback in one system, but there is a like a concept he excels in, a way of football he excels in, and one clearly that he's not. Like, if you put like, him in the Minnesota Vikings offense, I don't know that we – like, they're better – I mean, I, like, I, I don't know. There's no reason then, Matt, that he should not be performing with the weapons that he has there. No, he right. collapsed as a player. That's what happened this wow. offseason. He had an unprecedented decline. That's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah, but see, or it's has- a horrible stretch, and he bounces back. I just don't see that. But I, uh, you got I, brothers looking at him sideways as he drinks. Way Gatorade. sideways. <laughs> I don't think that They're happens. Spinning. He might have no, and he's not a. And we we can talk about this. No, too. but he's been corny forever. This isn't no, new. Matt, you knew where I was going. There's a new level of corny to Russell Wilson this year. I've never seen this level of corny. I've never seen it. You want to talk about unhinged? That, but like, I've the never... subway, the subway danger witch commercial is one of the most unhinged things I've ever watched in my entire life. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Yes, everything, everything is Scary. everything is super cringy. That's not a guy I rally behind. Like, if you go and post a sixty something quarterback rating. And you're terrible. And then I wake up the next morning and these are the TikToks that I'm seeing. Like what? Like if I open my phone on a Tuesday morning and it's Russell Wilson talking about, Russ, what are you most fa- faithful sure. for? Uh, uh, like family, football. I, I'm, oh man. Oh man. Like that would, that, that makes me mad. And I'm not even on the Broncos. 
Like, so that's not a quarterback that makes me want to like, like, like that I rally behind that I get behind that motivates me. Like that's uber corny. It's different when you're winning though. Right. Yeah, and when, it's also because he's with a new team. You can't be doing that with a new team that you're not established with yet. Well, yeah, I'm sure some. You see how you see how um, what's his name talks? How about how Richard Sherman talks about him? Right? Richard yeah. Sherman. No, I'm anti Richard Sherman with his Russell Wilson points. Well, it's, you, it's, you, you all, all, all I'm them. saying, all I'm saying is just because you're a teammate, don't mean yeah. you know what I mean. Just because you're a longtime teammate. His longtime teammates can't even get a hold of him. They guys are through his manager. That's like, horrible and terrible. You know what I mean? It, it, he's blamed Russell Wilson for losing the Super Bowl countless times. Wilson's never <laughs> blamed Sherman once when his defense let up 14 points in the fourth quarter. That's yeah, why the loss Because Richard Bowl. Sherman himself didn't do that. <laughs> he's the defense. Russell Wilson himself threw an interception on the goal line. That was Russell Wilson himself. The he's the like captain of the defense, on the, like or Bobby Wagner, whatever. But you know what I mean? Like, it's his responsibility. I, I hear you. I hear you. All right. So, y'all, I hope all our listeners and viewers enjoyed that because not too many times we're going to wear our L's like that. But you know what? You know, get a little transparent good. on the podcast. And like I said, when there's so little of them, they're easy to pick out. <laughs> all right. This next one, we're going to go to the second segment of our podcast because, of course, it is opening week for the NBA. I say that because we're recording on Wednesday. It'll air on Thursday. So, one night of games have been played, but the rest of the slate of the NBA plays tonight. Wednesday with, of course, some more big games tomorrow on Thursday. Before we get into our second segment, you guys had the first opportunity to watch the Sixers in the regular season. Get a little handled by the Boston Celtics. But here's what I'll say. A brand new team in the Sixers played one of the most cohesive and put together units in the NBA. The most tenured unit together in the NBA who just came off a finals run. So, like, from a a third-party point of view, y'all are fine. Like, it's not... I know you losing to the Celtics doesn't feel good on primetime TV. No one's talking about Ime Udoka right now because they won. So, like, I know that doesn't feel good as a Sixers fan, but just know that, like, do not hyper-react to the first game of the season. No, this is actually – this is calm and fair. Uh, You know, obviously, if they win, then it's the biggest deal ever. But if they were to lose like they did, yeah, it's just the first game of the season. This is important to keep in mind for all sports with your team. They win, huge deal. Lose, man. Yeah, Philly's better at Um, some places than others. The only thing I will say – is fire Doc Rivers. <laughs> that might be true. I'm, I'm holding on to that one until a little later in the season. Uh, but Joel looked incredibly disinterested last night. And I wonder if it has something to do with Harden dribbling the ball more than the rest of the team combined. I wonder if it has something to do. And Harden looked amazing. Amazing shaking people to the ground like he hasn't done. 22 first half points. That's the Harden y'all have been he, clamoring He for, had right? a burst. He had a burst like I haven't seen since he was That's with Houston. in his M- Harden. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that was amazing to see. And you know what? If it takes him dribbling 500 times to get there, maybe that's something you can consider. It's going to take some figuring out with Tobias Harris as the fourth man with – uh, Joel now sharing the ball with Harden and Maxi at large. It's going to be. Tough. I saw a lineup that was James Harden, um, D'Anthony Melton, um, George Niang, mm. um, Matisse Thybul, and who was who was the? Sounds thing? like you're putting together the all all bench and Harden. The get out of my way lineup. The, hey, you guys stand here and let me dribble line up. I'd probably dribble 500 times, too, if I was out there with that lineup. <laughs> yes, I would. I would go get my bucket every – and that's what that lineup was there for. Because when you're in the game with Embiid and Maxi and all the other starters, do you become a distributor. We need you to move the offense. If we want you to go get some buckets and get some scoring under your belt to get in rhythm, throw you out there with guys you're not going to look at twice. The thing, go get a bucket. I mean, also, the thing with Embiid is people forget because he was so great for almost all of last year. It was the first 10 games of last year. He kind of was really bad. And, like, there are, like, people are kind of freaking out about it. I just kind of think he's a little bit of a player who gets a little rusty in the sense that game defense, double team, and he turns the ball over, and that's his huge weakness. And he's corrected that a lot recently, um, but especially last year's lows of his career. But, like, it will take him a couple games, especially against the best defense in basketball, which was Celtics for last year. Um, And last night. So, like, just get ready for it. Like, just get, like, if that happens, and Bede plays better if that's game 20 of the season, not game one. As most people. But all right, before we get too much on a tangent, the second segment is actually some NBA trivia. So we haven't done trivia in a while. It's always good to get the, the muscles going, keep it loose with some NBA trivia. So Stat Matt has come up with, again, some trivia questions that he's going to pose 
to Jake and I, and we'll see who, who knows their NBA trivia the best. Which is, well, we go back and forth a lot. We, you've won some, I've won some. We've done, we've done pretty good. This is a good series. This is like an all-time rivalry here. Yeah. Classic. I, if it's 2-2, two, two, I have a tiebreaker question. Right. So, and, right. and then, so we'll start with one person. If they don't get it, do we want to do a steal? Or, or, is, it or just, is it both just give our answers? Both give your answers. Okay. Okay. Uh, but we, have so, to, like, we have to make sure like we, I'm not just answering because like you said. Okay, so. Like, honor system. Like, yeah, was, so type it in your like notes on your laptop. Okay, right, so right. the first question. So who is this team? Last year, and the hint of, for all these is all the teams at worst made the playing tournament. So this team finished 20th in offensive efficiency in both overall offensive efficiency and half court offensive efficiency, that's hard to say. And this off season, they added, I'll be a little more specific than what it says in the script, a guard who ranked second in pick and roll scoring, sixth in pull up scoring, and made the fourth most above the break threes um, last year. I think I have an answer. Me too. Uh, so th- this this team is um, uh, this team. I, I'll, I'll actually I'll, I'll do this. There, no, I can't do that. That's too obvious. So I think you guys should get this. Yeah, one. I don't. I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's that read difficult. The question. I need more hints. Who uh, you want to answer first yeah. this time? Yes. Uh, and I think we talked talked about them a couple of Who's episodes ago, maybe last episode. Yeah. Uh, I got the Cleveland Cavs. Same. Got it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Donovan Hold Mitchell. On. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell is obviously the guard, mm-hmm. right? Who, who they acquired. And, and look, man, if that just, like, the, the Cavs are well balanced, at least on the offensive end. I think the major question we're going to have is how well can they defend as a unit. We talked about Donovan Mitchell's got to be that high motor guy who can really pull it together for them on the defensive end. But, like, on the offensive end, like, they are a well put together unit, man. Like, they should be able to, to keep pace with, like, the best scoring team in the league. Yeah, I'm excited. As I mean, we, we talked about them at length, but, like, I'm very excited to see how that offense ends up working out. You basically have all the redeeming values in Rudy Gobert and Jared Allen, mm-hmm. except you and your bullies. <laughs> he doesn't get bullied because he's not a goofball who Ugh. spreads COVID and ruins teams. And I mean, that was a really big dividing point or the start of the fracturing of that relationship. Yeah, Cavs, Mavs, whatever they play is going to be must see because I, I think Donnie's going to want to put that boy under the ring. He's seen him get dunked on by so many people. That you he's mean like, Timberwolves. Timberwolves, right? I mean, I mean Wolves. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Um, Cavs, Wolves. Like he's got to see. He's got to want to put that man under the rim. He's got to. Well, Cat's not going to stop him, so it'll be. Cat'll be the three point line. <laughs> Cat'll be the person who Donovan Mitchell blows by to get to Rudy Gobert. Yeah, so, so, the, yeah, so right, the basically, one. the Cavs' biggest weakness was their offensive efficiency, right? Um, and they added one of the best scoring guards in the game. Yeah. So half court offense, you need a guy to get you an ISO bucket, a Donovan Mitchell. They solved the biggest yeah, flaw. Yeah, the best guys in the league, too. Got a couple other Wait, guys. All right, so 1-1 one, one we got here. So go ahead. Team two. Team. So they finished 28. This team finished 28th in bench points per game, 30th in offensive rebounds per game. And this offseason, they added a power forward slash center that had a 9.6 offensive rebound rate for his career, which would lead, which would have led the league, well, would have, which would have led this team last season and as a bench player, averaged 13.1 points per game. Uh, another hint I will say is the rest of these teams made the playoffs, just okay. in general. I think I have an answer that I believe is going to be wrong, but it's a good guess, and I'm going to go down firing. So I think I have my team. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the how the positional breakdown works out with who I'm thinking of. Um, this, this team... I think, I, I think, yeah, me too. All right, go ahead. This, okay, I, I'm answering first. Yeah, I, I'm either like good ass answer, James, or wrong answer, James. The Sixers? That's my guess. I got the Sixers, the Sixers too. That's the Sixers. Let's go. All right. Okay. So if my trust Harrell is the is yep. the big man picked up. Hey, that felt good because I was tough. I, I thought that was wrong. I was like, ah, 28th in bench points, but but I was like, but think about who who came up the bench scoring last year. Cork Maz. Ah. You know why they're 30th in offensive rebounds? Because Embiid, Embiid shot takes every shot. shot. Yeah, so yeah. That's true. And we saw last night PJ Tucker uh, was open a lot in the corner, number one. And number two, I thought he had great chemistry 
with Harden. There was a couple of like moves. Well, yeah, where, them boys they play together. They a lot. play. They, they, they know they, they have, and, and they're long time like lifelong friends. So like they. they and that's ultimately that. why he got thirty M's from the Sixers yeah. or whatever he got is for that reason right there. So. For sure, for sure. All right, two two. That was that got the juices flowing a little bit. All right, go ahead. So this team finished 29th in points in the paint and 29th in second chance points. They added two centers this offseason, one that averaged 17 and 10 last season, and one who's a veteran with championship pedigree. Oh, I think Bonus points if you could name both centers. I think you're being a little tricky here, Matt. Me I've too. Been... Me too. You think? Me too. I don't think it's that tricky. Me That's my hint. I don't think it's tricky. Uh, I have one. I have two guesses. One fulfills one center. One fulfills the other. <laughs> no, no, no. But they, they got they, both of them. I know what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't think the team, the two teams I have, fulfill both the. Like the, the, the one of championship pedigree. Like you might have forgotten that this team got him. That's why I'm giving it a That's bonus why point. I know, and uh, you I can't. Have, you can't Google search one. No, 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 I'm, I'm just writing. Okay, right okay, now. okay. I'm writing down. Like, I forget who it was. Oh, oh, let me take I it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> this is really tough for me. I think my answer is going to be wrong. Like I'm going to try and get Matt here, and I think that he's he's shaking me a little bit. Um, me too. I'm going to another hint. The last, the first two teams are Eastern Conference teams. The next, the last two are Western. Oh, bro, that's I, I have it. Actually, it actually doesn't narrow down my two options at either. But like that, that was a, that was a big hit. You shouldn't have gave us that hit. That was a big hit he just gave. You think? Both my teams were of one conference anyway, but, like, that's a big hit he gave. Mm, yeah, it takes I, out half the NBA. Well, I guess. Yeah. I guess in that, in that sense it does. <laughs> it actually eliminated the team that I thought it was. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. So that's a good guess. That's a good hint. Um, okay, let me think. I, I'm going to lock in my answer that I'm almost positive is wrong, okay. but I don't have any other guesses right, at the moment. Ahead. What's yours? So, oh, I don't know if he's a center. I'll say it. I think the answer is the Dallas Mavericks. Christian Wood Christian was. Christian Wood, yeah. But I couldn't think Who's of another the other one. Center? I thought, did they, did they have Willie Cauley Stein? He was already there. No, no, your, the Suns have Willie Cauley Stein. Okay, okay, wait. Who was your pick? Yeah, it was your. It was either the. You have Mavs, to pick one. I know. God. I get. All right, so you pick the Mavs. I'm going to go the Timberwolves. It's the Mavs. Let's go! Oh, let's go! Oh, no, Who was the other? Who was the other? JaVel McGee. Oh, the Willie Cauley Stein clone. No, no seriously. Or I guess the prototype. The prototype. The prototype. That's uh, and and you know what? It's weird to describe Javale as a veteran of championship pedigree, like, but that's did, exactly what he is. Yeah, but why did crap? Like, why did I? Why did I let you like get me? Like, I could answer the Mavs too. <laughs> well, you you know who I thought Matt was sneaking us with is I thought this was going to be the Detroit Pistons, and the guy who averaged seventeen and ten was Jalen Duran last year in college. <laughs> that's what I thought Matt was going to be sneaky that's like a stat that. Matt type no, but they uh, again all these teams made the playoffs. And you know what? There it is. When you said champion, the center has championship pedigree, you might forgot he has them. I know because he doesn't have a champion. Was DeAndre Jordan on the Lakers team? No, they, yes, he was yeah, right. Yeah. So I, th- I almost sure. picked the Nuggets because I'm like, is he trying to sneak like DeAndre Jordan and going to the Nuggets? But I was like, they didn't like their other center. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also, I'm center. doing acquisitions that I think will help the team. I'm only naming things. So you're giving uh, too many hits. No, no, no. So, did, so <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can get them by this. No. So the, again, so they uh, were 29th points in the paint and second chance points. Christian Wood and JaVel McGee are going to help that a lot. That's true. It's yeah. going to help Luka give the load off the offense, not have the highest Hey, man, the Mavs, the, play, the Mavs play the Suns tonight to kick off the season. So, like, we're, we're going to see that offense real soon. And, like, that's all Luka needed was just some pressure in s- somewhere. Take it off of me somewhere. And I would rather, like, almost rather them – as a competitor of the Mavs, get another like complimentary score than to get someone to do the dirty work for him. Yeah, because then now all he does like he can go He's out in his bag. You don't care. Oh man, he don't got to go and rebound. He also, go Christian Wood like, deserves to be on a contender yeah. for sure, and that's really nice to see him there for sure, for sure. All right, so three to two, Jake. Yep. All right, so the best I can do is just lose by one now. It's no, tough. but you can tie. You can tie. I can tie. True, that's true. That's true. I give you a lot of credit. Think you're actually gonna get this. So this team finished 30th in loose balls possessed, 26th in forcing turnovers, and 21st in opponents' field goal percentage. They added a great defender at guard who averaged 1.1 loose balls possessed per game, sixth among all guards, and finished 13th among all guards in contested shots per 36. I literally had it, and I remembered you said it's a Western Conference. 
No, no, that was last one, right? No, both the of them. Two, two east, two west. Oh, it's eliminate who I thought it was going was gonna, to be. That's big. Hawks. I thought it was the Hawks. Um, I was going to say it was the Nets because Ben Simmons. Uh, but I then I realized the he's Hawks. not off. I was going to say the Hawks and John Murray is like second in the league in steals. Like yeah. That. Oh, and these are <laughs> last year's stats. So no Ben Simmons stats. Ah, <laughs> okay. Good one. Good one. Good one. Um, this is a toughie here. Actually, nothing's yeah, popping see. to mind. Nothing comes right to mind. Um, let's see. When you think of their offseason. Oh, 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 I got it. I got oh, it. Oh, no. And it's hilarious. Oh, no. And it's hilarious. This is a good one to end All right. that. Um, I answer first anyway. So, I... I think I'll give you like five, ten, ten more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Most I'll allow you to do is look up a list of teams in the NBA. So no, no, no. I'm, I'm not going to do that. That would be besmirching my NBA prowess. That's true. Uh, yeah. So, and in... In the West, this was you're saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Five, four, three, two. Uh, I guess I'm really liking my answer, but it's wrong. It's wrong. Right. Uh, I'm going first. Yeah. The Lakers. No. Nope. Damn, no way. Pat Bev went. Pat Bev didn't scrape over a loose ball. Are yeah, you that's kidding sick. me? That's actually a really good guess. Oh, Pat Bev. I was like, who on the Lakers? I thought it was Pat Jake Bev. said the Clippers. It's not the Clippers. I said either. the Clippers. For who was, adding John Wall? Wow, John Wall yeah. and Clippers. The Lakers didn't make the playoffs. But you said the, oh they didn't make but they weren't all the anything. all the all the teams <laughs> I that, forgot about the, the Denver Nuggets averaged Bruce Brown got Bruce, Bruce Brown. Brown wow he's a Matt. great guard defender wow Matt wow. Oh, he's hey, a scrappy about, guard defender and about the only he's, thing the Nuggets didn't do last year was defend yeah. Not the only thing they did. Don't, do. don't, dude. I, I said the Nuggets. You're I really. Said the nuggets. You're I said treading the, closely on the Nuggets. He's, he's the kind of guy the Nuggets need. For sure. Yes. And he's a, yes. like a great yes. acquisition for them to like fill a hole. Like that. And you know, like you know who's also a really scrappy guard the Nuggets got and when he gets back healthy from your problem? That boy too. Shout out Colin G, man. Get healthy, man. Get healthy, CG. Is he on the team? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I, I actually, I, I guess I do crazy. remember yes, that. Sir. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I take the dub here. Do you want to run out the Break three two? Uh, do you want to run out the 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 last question? We'll give one last gasp. So it won't count. I didn't figure out because this team was underwhelming in the off season, in my opinion. I just have they finished twenty ninth in free throw rate, and they were a contender last year. Twenty ninth in free throw rate, and they were. Did they made the play in. They made the playoffs. But, but we're terrible at free throws. Free throw rate, getting right, to drawing, the free throw line. Getting to the line. Not percentage, so rate. Shot a lot. I got my answer. Yeah, I got my answer. I might have mine. Who's yours? I have the Atlanta Hawks. That's who I had. Phoenix Suns. Damn, Dude. that was the second one. Oh. Wait. So, and did they didn't. Did they add someone that? No. That's why I didn't. That's why I didn't. No. Gotcha, no. Gotcha. The Suns literally didn't add anybody. <laughs> Not that they had anyone to help. The free throws. They didn't add anybody. We lost people and added no one. Do not get me started on the Suns acquisition. They're about to lose Jay Crowder. Right? Another stat I saw that was sad is that Matisse Thybul was fourth in the NBA in quality three point, um, like. Like basically open three point. Like how how often he was open three point. He only shoots one shot. No, but and he met, but his percentage is so crap. But. Yeah, he shoots what he gave me. Don't make it. He doesn't make it. All right, that's pretty good. Jake gets the trivia dub for this one. Good job on his part. Enjoy it. I will be back the next. Put in the trophy round. case. Yeah, I will be back. Parade. Don't lock it because I'll be back for that <laughs> for that trivia trophy. But we're almost out of time for this episode of Straight Facts. It was a great one as always. We can get some shots about the buzzer. Someone got a shot at the buzzer for me real quick. The playoff format in baseball is silly, but it's always been silly. That's the point of it. The best team doesn't win in most American sports because there's a tournament at the end. Of course, 162 games is a better way to determine who's the best team, but we want to see who's going to win the World Series. Mm -hmm. I think there should be more claim to a team like the Dodgers who won 111 games. There should be like – it shouldn't be like, oh, wow, they choked in the playoffs. Like – they lost a four game series to the Padres. If they did that in July, no one would blink. But because it's like, it's just kind of, this is what happens. But it's also what makes it great. Also, this isn't new in baseball. Yeah. At all. The Twins in 1987 won 87 games. The 
Blue Jays missed the playoffs that year with 96 wins. The Orioles missed the playoffs that year with 91 wins. The Yankees missed the playoffs that year with 90 wins. And other divisions. And, and they won the World Series with a negative run differential. It's always been silly. The Cardinals won with 83 wins. This isn't a new thing. People are just mad that the Mets and Dodgers got knocked out because they're high-profile teams. I'm not upset that the Mets got knocked out at all. <laughs> In the slight or the Dodgers. Yeah, In I'm the slightest. Very happy, very happy about it, actually. Um, but no, that that's true. And like the only I actually don't have a problem with three and five game series. I actually think more uh, the NBA is the only this point I'm thinking about. Should adopt a five game series, like should be more willing to adopt a five game series in the beginning rounds. Bro, like yeah. to be honest, like yeah. I don't want to see a seven game series of a one eight team. Right. Very rarely do you get a good matchup. Like very rarely. I remember what so was like, let's that. get this thing done in five. Like, and let's, you know what I mean? Let, let's move on and get on to it. The only, the problem I have, the qualm I have with it is that even in the five game series, the away team gets not one home game or in the three game series, the away team doesn't get a home game at all. It's all three straight, which I guess it's hard because you'd go one, one, wild, one. Wild card team. That's kind of the. But so you get for being a wild card team. Right. Yeah. That's the big, the big detractor. Yeah. But you know what? I mean, you made it to the playoffs. Like, I, I think, I think everyone should have at least one. But like you said, Matt, it's always been that way in baseball. You just kind of learn to adopt it at this point. Um, but yeah, Jay, you got something to say at the buzzer? Uh, we talked about it pre-show. I'm going to start to tabulate how many articles, tabulate. how many Hell podcasts that. from The Ringer, from ESPN, who are they talking about that's going to be MVP? Because after last year, what we learned is some people may be getting their pockets lined. No, I won't go that far. I'm just <laughs> sure. but th- But seriously, it is, I think, a upcoming issue for the NBA and for sports in general, where you have people who are able to lucratively bet on the NBA in terms of awards, which is completely, totally dictated on voters who could be the people placing bets on who they know is going to win because be all of their coworkers are also betting for, are also going say, for If you have place. a vote for the MVP, you can't bet. You're on. not allowed to, yeah, but yeah. I bet it's easy there's, to. There's oh, no yeah. le- I mean, I you can just. No, no, just, NBA rules, not legal. Right. right. But, like, I could just tell you, go place the bet for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just, it gets really hairy. You guys brought up, like, Sham Sharania partnering with FanDuel. Of course, FanDuel's trying to get. You know, from a, from a facing side, like, yeah, FanDuel wants to get their foot in whatever door they can, sports-wise, I get it. But it becomes really scary for, like, the average better. Mm. When Sham Sharani could be like, hey, I'm not going to put out the tweet that LeBron's out tonight for another 20 minutes. Why don't you guys, you know, cover yourselves up yeah. and make sure you don't get bet on too bad here? All you got to do is is lean out the door, shut down the hallway. Right it's here, crazy. Right so it's, 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 it's going to be an issue down the road, but. I mean, this is what sports betting brings. So. And and you know what? This is one of the few times that as a non-sports better that like commotion happens and I'm sitting like on the sideline like happy I'm not in sports betting. Because most of the time when commotion happens, it's because like you guys get to take advantage of something and earn extra money or put a bet down somewhere. And I'm not able to do that because I don't even know how this stuff works half the time. For me, like now like, I'm, in, I'm in a great spot where I'm like, ah, you guys all look really stressed out about this. <laughs> And it won't affect me. But it's also taken over how people watch sports in not a good way. It used to be sports betting, like, when it was, like, illegal. It would be like, oh, isn't it funny? Like, Herbert didn't throw a touchdown pass, and a lot of people bet on it. And then instead of people talking about the Chargers winning in overtime to go to 4-2, and two, all of sports Twitter is talking about the fact that they lost on a boosted odds bet that it should have been a sure thing. And like that's not what sports is supposed to be about. It's not about your freaking bet. We don't. I don't care about your. I don't care about random Twitter person's bet. Just like I don't care about random Twitter person's fantasy team. So like it's uh, the fact that it's just invaded like the normalcy of sports talk is is frustrating. I mean, fantasy. It should be a. It should be a separate topic. Yeah. And like it's like. It's it's like a side. I I like that. Separate church and state. Like it should be. It shouldn't be the basis of that's why I hate when people base the like their basis of if a player is good or not of how they're doing in fantasy. Yeah. Like and well, that's why sometimes when sometimes it's happens sometimes it's not it's, it's but a lot of times right. it's not. You yeah. know what I mean? When you talk about just a football sense, like this guy could be helping my football team Kyle Pitts. and his right in his ways and not pop it off in fantasy. So it's why I didn't like fantasy football for the longest time. Cause one, it gave like novice people and very ignorant fans something that they thought they were like really knowledgeable about football like you'd say a name to him and you'd be like oh he's not good 
And they, they think they know because they see that guy get seven points in fantasy and instead of actually watching his film. You know what or I mean? Or worse, they perform really well in week 17, which doesn't matter to fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah true, and, true. But that's what got him in the playoffs. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I, it's just along those lines of that, man. Like I can see, you know, very much of that. But that's funny to hear your disdain of sports betting for a second. That, that's actually really funny. All right. All I have to say at the buzzer is, like, Jake, you've known us for a long time. You were one of the first people who were there with me when I really hopped on this bandwagon. But I feel like I got to remind everybody out there that is, it's still Puma fam first. Like I got, I got the Nike on today. I got, I got the pollens on the feet. You can't see them under the desk. I got the pollens on um, Nova sweatshirt. So it's Nike, a Nike basketball Jersey. The socks are Nike. Like, and l- absolutely love my job at Nova. Couldn't love anything more to be honest, but they, they're making me buy a lot of Nike. Like, I bought more Jordans than I've imagined. I got more Nike sweats. All their apparel is Nike. Can I be honest with you? Don't what? That's not the L that you're making it out to be. It re- it's just like... It's not an... It's an L. It's not an L. It's a humble brag. It's it's not a humble <laughs> brag at all. Puma it, will forgive you. You know that they will forgive you. I don't know, man. He's trying to get Puma to send him some free stuff. <laughs> so hey, hey, man. Hey, man if y'all, Nike went in the battle, man. Like, I only got so much I can... You're going to clip this when you ask for free stuff and be like, what do you think? When I when here's how I knew it was getting bad is the MB twos came out and then there's a pair of Jordan fours that are dropping at the end of October and I can only afford one pair and I said to myself ah uh, I'm gonna wait on the mellows because I want to make sure I get these Jordans and then ten seconds later I gasped. <laughs> That's like, a funny image. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I thought of it. I was, so you're like, looking on your laptop. Like, just you know, just, 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 just like. Yeah, <laughs> but you know the you know the DJ Khaled meme where he, he started to, <laughs> that was me. Like no way did I make this decision, and I'm sticking to it. But like I was want everyone to still know, it's still Puma fam. The paws are still on me whenever they can be. It's just you know I got a I got a job, man. What I gotta talk to my because there's a bunch of my fans out there be like, why he wasn't wearing so much Nike? I can't believe he's is he still a Puma fan. Like I hear is, it's all over the papers. Stephen A talking about it on first tape. Got like, your I got, picture up there. I gotta I gotta set the record straight, man. I'll say I, is that an old color? I, I've never seen like so a this is like, like this that. is the nineties color yeah, scheme. That's yeah, why yeah. I, I, that's really it's oh no, I'm sorry. This is the eighty the eighties color scheme. This is the color scheme when they want to chip. I like then they, the then they go to the maroon in the nineties yeah. and they go to the the logo. I like the yellow. It makes it. Pop. You know what I mean? Shout out, shout out that boy too, man. You know what I mean? We love, we love to see it. No but, Phillies update because it'd be a sad one. Yep, yep, yep. No, no way. No, 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 keep it pushing. <laughs> no keep it pushing. way. Keep it pushing. I don't even want to end the episode <laughs> <laughs> because I know as soon as I, I'm gonna check the score, as soon as I end the episode, yeah, yeah, I want to prolong know. the sadness. Dang, Knowles. All right. Well, that's all we have for this episode of Straight Facts. It was a great one. Shout out to everybody on the Up On Game Presents Network. Again, make sure you're liking and subscribing to them on all platforms. Everyone over there doing a great job. Lamar Arrington, Plexico Burris, and TJ Hushmanzada. We appreciate y'all. And of course, shout out my guys, Jake Galley and Stat Matt Robinson. I'm James Jackson. These have been the facts. Straight up.